Okay, I've got a new system. I got a new system in the shop and I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, it is a closet shelf system and I've really pumped in some hours on this and I haven't really practiced with it. So I'm just going to get into it. This is the system as it exists in the shop right now. So I'm hoping that it just works right out of the box. Um, so we're going to do this. It's kind of a live video, even though I'm, I'm not streaming live. We're just going to do this on the fly. So I've got a couple of files in the root folder, one of which is an example system, which is a big architectural block of the full system, or not even the full system, a part of the system. And but I would start with the example full unit. Let's place an example full unit just to take a look at what this is. And we're also going to place an example wall unit. And then we'll get into 3D and look at what this is. Now, you can already tell these are cabinets. Everything's built from cabinets, my favorite tool in all of Chief Architect land. So I'm going to take this cabinet and let me just shove it all the way up against the wall. And then I'm just going to multiple copy across down the line. And I already have this set to 30 inches. I know I do. There we go. And I'll delete this end one so we can kind of work. Actually, maybe we'll delete a couple of these so we can work on a few of these. Uh, for this corner section here. So from here, I want to get into the closet shelf system or the full height cabinet system. We'll start with the full height cabinet system. And right away, there's only one folder in here, but I want to do this just for future use if I start to um, division some of these things out. So here we go. We're in the painters. And what the painters are, are they're just style palettes. So that if I go into object mode and paint this there we go. I immediately get a new unit here, right? It's painting everything that I had saved in another unit onto this new unit. I'm in object replacement mode. So you can see here, there's quite a few of these. I've got a floating one even. I've got a couple floating ones. And you can produce your own floating ones. And I'll show you how to do that momentarily. And then I've got shoe shelf. Here, let's copy out a few more of these. There's quite a few of these. Quite a few different shoe shelves. Try these out. And so I built these shelves using all of the components that I include. I like this one, a little narrow one. You can kind of squeeze that in in between some other ones. Same with this, this little narrow section one here, and these hanging ones. So I'll show you real quick. This is, this is an easy way to adapt, uh, adopt some of these hanging sections, okay? So we'll open this up. And I wanna take note of the configuration here. I'm gonna minimize these layout sections, okay? And then from there, I wanna select this toe kick. But before I delete it, I actually wanna expand this left vertical section, and I want to see what the height is of these horizontals. Seven and five eighths. So I do want these to end up being seven and five eighths later down the line if I'm going to make this into a hanging unit. So here's what I'll do. I will select this toe kick, get, going to get rid of it. I'm going to get into the general panel here, and we're going to go, uh, actually before I do that, I want to make sure that this lowest door, this section right here, is unlocked from auto resizing. This layout, I should say. Unlock it from auto resizing. I want this to resize, okay? And then, in general, I'm going to, let's change this. Let's change it to something like 72. And that means we're going to push it 12 inches off the ground. There we go. And the last bit is I can come back in here and delete this lower door section. And sometimes it's difficult to select, so you might need to get into the stack and delete that. And then that last shelf, really, since this is unlocked still, this shelf is that going to be that, um, what did we say, 7 five eights? Is that right? Yeah. There we go. And now we have a hanging unit. And in fact, we can make it even more of a hanging unit if we wanted to. We can um, reduce this even more. Let's reduce it by another six inches. So 72 minus six, 
and then just make sure the top of this is lined up again. There we go, and you notice that the clothes here, because of the way I built this symbol, the clothes actually still hang. Kind of clever, right? So there we go, we got another hanging unit. And then you could drag it, you could drag it to, you know, make it line up with the, the hanging unit next to it if you want. So kind of dynamic. Now let's get into some of the components in this system. We've got a components folder. We've got an accessories section. Okay. Now this is a blank door and I'm, and I purposely made a blank door and what it does is it's got a singular face. Now you could get in and open up the cabinet and um, add this basket to it that way, but there is a way to find the little tiny itty bitty little face that's in here that's making it blank, but sometimes that's challenging. So I might wanna come in here and add it if I wanted to add a basket to this section. So let me open this up. And then that last, that last section here, see this opening, I'm gonna change this to a door. It needs to be a door. And we wanna make sure it's not an automatic door. So it's gonna be a left door, okay? Now that I have that, I can take six inch or an eight inch basket and replace this. Now notice I'm in component painter mode. I wanna be in component painter mode. If I'm in object painter mode, it's gonna replace any um, doors that are similar to this one. So there we go, and now I've added in a basket. Now this basket has you know, some stretch planes. If I wanted to get this basket to line up correctly, I might need to modify some things, lock this section. But for the most part, I think that looks pretty good. We could have make it so that this basket has a little wireframe that slides over this. Um, that might be something I do in the future, but um, all right, let me get back to a regular rendering mode. Now let's look into, let's see, we've got clothing for replacement components. You see here, I've got some um, folded clothing. You can just, when you hover over an object, you see I'm hovering over these shoes. You see here, we're in component replacement mode. I just get to click and it's gonna add these clothes there. Super simple, super easy, get a different look and feel. You can make this into, you know, just a clothing stock unit. Very, very quick and easy to do that, okay? Same thing here, we've got built-in hanging clothes. Well, we can change the type of hanging clothes here. Hover over this section, just click, and there we go, it replaces it. Very cool. We get into these shoes, now there's two sections in shoes, angled or flat. Now, angled are meant for these angled shelves here. Flat are meant for these flat shelves here. So in the flat section, I can come in here, take a look, get some sneakers, hover over, replace, there we go. Now, if you happen to have my shelf replacement system, my quick shelf replacement system, Rab's shelf replacement system, uh, inside of the 15 inch units or the 30 inch units. Many of these items will work with this closet system as well. So if you have both, don't be shy to use it. We can come in here and paint a basket in here. Maybe I'll add some of this stuff to um, the closet system in the future. But um, if you do have the shelf replacement system, you do get to add some of these items in here and they will make for you know more dynamic shelves as well. So got even some more options. You can even hang a plant in here or a radio or something. I don't know that you would, but you could from that shelf replacement system. Shelf replacement systems made more for decor. This is really specific to closets. So that's what I built this out for is closets specifically. So the next kind of thing that I want to go over is to just be able to modify some of this stuff. You notice here, this shelf right here is built from the shelf next to it. I just modified it and we can do this kind of stuff on the fly. So I'm going to open this cabinet up, just kind of understand the sections within a cabinet to be able to understand how to do this is that I'd like to make it so that all these, I want these top shelves to be locked. Okay. I like those angle. Actually, let me say the bottom shelves. We'll say the bottom three shelves, we'll make them locked. So I wanna uh, select this horizontal and lock it. Lock, and that next section, you can see it highlighted on the right, lock it. Maybe we'll go one more, lock it. That means when we delete things from these upper sections, it's not gonna make a difference. It's not going to affect anything. So this is, um, this is a good kind of way of doing this. 
Now, instead of just deleting these and reconfiguring these, let me just press OK real quick. Let me show you a couple things. In the shelves section, excuse me, in the, let's see, we're in components. Choose angle flat. We've got a shoe shelf, 18 inch. The other thing we need to do is, well, I'll, I'll end up making a flat shelf. So we do need to delete some things here. Instead of just giving you a flat shelf, I had expected that you were going to be using a separation here. So we would change door left for this angled shelf into a separation. And it's going to default. Okay. So these door lefts, I want to make these into separations. What I'm doing now is basically making a flat shelf. And one more door left, make that into a separation. Now I have flat shelves. Now notice the thickness of these shelves. They're a little bit off. Um, that's because we locked some of these sections, like this section here. We had locked this from auto resize. I want to make these a default thickness and just click on that default icon. That's easy enough. Notice a lot of these sections, we locked these upper sections and I, is that what I wanted to do? I didn't think I wanted to do that. I thought I was doing the inverse. Maybe I'm confused. Yeah, now I'm confused. <laughs> all right, well, regardless, gonna make these all defaulted sections, defaulted thickness here, and that'll make it that three quarter inch thick shelf. So this is another way you can kind of change things is you can specify the thickness of shelf with this method, works real well. Now that I've changed those, I want to get into my flat section and I can just click and replace. Now you might go into object replacement mode here. That might make it a little bit faster, right? So it just, it just highlighted and, and replaced a bunch of these items. Same thing. You see, this is an angled shoe. Now I go to replace this. It's going to be a flat, it's flat on that shelf. And very quickly, we've got a new shoe shelf built out, right? Look at that, pretty quick. So this is that system, I'd say play around with it. There's an infinite amount of configurations you might be making. If you're using a modular cabinet supplier and you have a particular item you would love me to incorporate into this, shoot me an email. I already have one gentleman shooting me emails about um, particular items he wants to incorporate in the closet system. And I will be working on that and pushing out updates later on. The price of the package might go up. So if you're one of those lucky people that have bought this at $10, more power to you. I think there was eight people and you got this whole system for $10. Right now at the at the um, current version of this and this video right now, it's at $80. It's probably gonna increase from there as I improve on it. Uh, maybe only another 20 bucks or something like that. It's a fantastic system. You can build out closets so fast. You're gonna recoup this cost so quickly, probably on your first job. So let me get into the hanging section here. So again, we have painters and I can just copy this, paste this on the other side. And something that we have here for, for a, a painter for the closet shelf system is I do have a corner shelf system okay but because this is already placed this is component based just like the other um part of this system this top shelf is in fact a door and then this bottom section is in fact a door so you can click in the closet replacement sections and replace this so if i need this to be a corner unit i can click on this it's going to become a corner unit now you see it just changed that rod configuration now I can slide this over into the corner. Let it bump to that corner. There we go. Now when I stretch this one, and a lot of these are stretchable, they can stretch quite a ways without um, having any problems. And then they can stretch down a little ways. Now there's one thing to note. If your default settings have it in cabinets that you're creating automatic, automatic blind corner cabinets, I would suggest you uncheck that. In fact, I uncheck create, create automatic fill, fillers as well, because it will be problematic with this system if you're trying to do a corner closet setup. Um, I make my own blind corners anyways, and I also make uh, my own um, fillers anyways, so this doesn't bother me. Now notice that, that the clothing 
you know, they're pushed to one edge. Well, the clothing, in fact, is a door. So you can get in here, open up this configuration, and you see that it's a door left. If you change it to a door right, you're going to see it flip sides. Okay, so we can flip the entire unit or we can flip individual doors, right? So there we go. Here's another um, a painter we could use. This next painter adds clothes on top. You're gonna notice it also turns this into a corner unit. We're gonna change that with the clawed replacement, a rod replacement system. We can make an open-ended one, just hover over the rod itself, and then there we go. And then just make sure that this is, you know, bumped to that other cabinet. Just like so. So very quickly, we can get some elaborate clothes hanging systems here. You might have a wall on this end. So I do have an end wall condition, hover over that rod, replace it, and you might need to flip this about itself. Or you can flip just that door if you need to. So that would be hung against a wall there. We've got a little bit of trim catching that rod. There we go. Now, there are a few standalone parts. These are accessories that were used to make this whole system. If you find that you need them, you can, you know, they are there, they're here. And then I have my old closet system that was uh, originally $10. That's in here as well. Um, not really using that anymore. So it does say Z old. And then, you know, some, uh, um, some standalone shirts, an architectural block with shirts. So if you want to make your own door, you can open up. Uh, some of these symbols and see how they're made to better understand how these how this is all put together um, you would have to just kind of match existing settings that i have if you want to make additional symbols like if you have your own clothes you would like to add or your own folded clothes these are meant to be really low poly count so hopefully your scene still moves very quickly this scene seems to be moving just fine for me um, let's throw some lights in here see what it looks like with a little pbr Give it a little three by four grid. And I put it in shadow. That wasn't very smart, was it? Yeah, and this is looking pretty good. So there you go. If you have any questions about this system, go ahead and shoot me an email. Email is going to be in the description of this video. And then if you've purchase this, please enjoy. Give me back some feedback if you'd like. Let me know how you like this. Let me know how it's working for you. Um, really do hope this meets all, all your needs. Should be a pretty good system for getting things done really quickly in a closet system. So enjoy. <laughs>